What's up everybody? Thanks for checking out this tip from Turning Point Music. Today I want to do a tip on using Easy Drummer in Pro Tools. Easy Drummer is great. I love it. I use it probably the most. That along with BFD and Addictive Drummer, drummer and some of the Contact Drummers. Uh, I use all of them together and I might expand this tip out to include those other ones uh, down the road. But today I just want to show how to set up using Easy Drummer in Pro Tools and to make a template out of it. So we're going to start from scratch. Come on, come on, relax. <clears throat> so in Pro Tools, I'm going to go Command N, and I'm going to, I'm going to call this for template. And you'll see why. So 4424, sure, that's great. I'm just going to put this on the desktop today. And here we go. So let's make a new instrument track, shift command N, command right, command down a few times until you get to instrument track. <clears throat> then we'll instantiate Easy Drummer. Let's name it and double click on the name plate there. Now to get started, let's just get something going just so we can hear some drums happening. So go to your browser, Grab just just anything anything that works. I hit Y to jump that to the start. And then I'm gonna grab something from the chorus too. I'm gonna go into shuffle mode, hit F1. Cool. I just wanted to have something that had a little more va variation as well. So now I got a ride in here and I got hats in here. So we just wanted to have something to hear basically. Now it's worth taking the time. If you have a bunch of different drum kits and stuff, uh, as I do, you should take the time to take the time now to pick the drum kit, go through. And if you want to check out different samples, take as much time as you possibly can now, because in setting a, up a template, you won't have to do this over and over again down the road. So it's really worth digging in and taking the time. But let's say I've done that and these are all the sounds that I like. So what we wanna do is route everything out to track. So we wanna to go to our mixer and route everything out appropriately and we're not gonna use one. We're gonna start with two since one is what it's already using and one's what's going to the main out. Let's start with two. So kick's gonna be two, snare's gonna be three, Hat's going to be four. Toms are going to be five. Now this one doesn't have distinct toms. Depending on what kit you choose, you might. So whether or not you want to route them all to their own outs or uh, all, to, uh, all to the same out is really up to you. Now overheads, I'm going to go six. And then a lot of the stuff you might not need distinct returns for. So... I definitely want my kick snare hats isolated. I want my toms going to their own thing, their overhead. Now everything else I'm gonna say, well, all the rest of this stuff I'm just gonna to send to the same thing. So you're gonna to go to seven. Everyone else will just go to seven. I would recommend sending everything to something though, because we don't wanna get anything still coming out of the main outs. And if you leave stuff routed to one, it will come out of the main out. You don't want to leave anything going there because you want to be able to print every single thing that you're hearing to your return tracks ultimately. So kick, snare, and hats, I'm going to make mono. So I'm going to go shift command N and make three enter mono tracks. And then toms, overheads, and everything else, I'm going to make stereo. So I'm going to go shift command N, command right, and then make three stereo tracks. Now all these guys, I just shift clicked up to the top and I hold shift option, fatten them up a little bit so we can see what we're doing. Now here I wanna go plug in, easy, two, left. And two, here's two, and since I'm choosing left because I want it to be mono, I'm gonna pan that all the way over to the left with kick, snare, and hats. So that when I choose plug in, easy, three, left and plug in easy four left we're getting the entirety of the signal let's go through and double click here and let's name all our, tr our tracks Maxima. so i'm going to go kick command right snare 
command right hats, command right. What else have we got? Toms, command right overhead, command right everything. Well, everything else is really what it is. So we routed the first three here. Oh, you know what else? We're going to have a ride too when we get into the second part. But the ride, it seems like, doesn't have its own distinct uh, output here. So that's got to be part of the overheads, I guess. So we don't have to think about that. All right, kicks in our hats. Tom's is going to be five. Plug in easy five. Plug in easy six. And plug in easy seven. Now, if we input enable or hold shift option and click on the I, all these tracks are now input enabled and let's take a listen and see if everything's routed to our tracks as it should be. Now what you might sometimes see, especially if you've done this panning hard left and taking one side thing, sometimes the kick might be clipping or this or the snare or hats. Like so. So if you see that, just you it's like you're just it's just like a preamp now. You just want to set your faders so that they're not clipping. Similarly, you could see your hi-hat level is really low here. You could turn it up now. You're not trying to get your mix situated with, with these faders. You're just trying to get a good hot level. You can mix it with your Pro Tools faders when you're ready to. Good, that's a little more respectable. So that's the first step of getting set up, and I really like this for a lot of reasons. One is now I could go through and whatever I want to do down the road to all my individual pieces I can do. So I can say, okay, well, I'm going to EQ the kick by itself. And maybe I want to limit it. Or I'm, if you find like you're usually going to do that, if you're usually going to limit your kick, then go ahead and throw that in there. And what I'll usually do, at least in setting up a template, is I'll throw in the plugins I might use and then I'll inactivate them, which is control command click. So they're sitting there, they're just re ready to be brought back to life, so to speak, but they're not taking up any CPU at all. So take some time to do that. If you find, okay, I'm always using some certain compressor or I often use some certain compressor on my snare, throw it on there. You could even go in and set it as you would if you want. And then again, inactivate it, control command click on it. So go through and take the time to throw whatever plugs on your tracks that you might use. Next thing I might do is make a master fader, shift command N, command down a few times so you get to master fader. I like to drag that over to the left. I might make a few returns. So I'm gonna go shift command N, then command right, command down, and I'm gonna make three auxes. I'm gonna call them verb one, command right, verb two, command right, verb three. Or actually, no, we'll do delay one as the last one. And then <clears throat> grab your favorite verbs. So I'm going to go reverb UA. This guy. Which I love. I'm just going to grab one of my presets. Reverb. I'm going to grab the Lexi, grab one of my presets again, and then I'm going to grab the Roland. And again, just choose whatever you normally use. You're doing this just to save time down the road so you don't have to do it over and over again. And then I might go a step further, grab everything you might want to send to any of that. So I, I clicked on the kick and I shift click over to uh, the last track on the right, the everything else and then hold shift option and route everything to track verb one. Hold shift option, same thing, track verb two. Maybe you'll send them to the delay, maybe you won't, but if, you're, if you might, there again, holding shift option. So now everything's sent there, and if you want, you can command click on the little 
dot right there and see all the faders expand out like you just saw. Another thing I would do is with all these still selected, hold shift option and click FMP for each row as I'm doing. And you'll see that makes them follow main pan is what FMP stands for. If you, so for example, if you take your hat and pan it over to the left, it's gonna maintain that panning in your verb and or your delay, which is pretty cool. So I might not set any levels here yet, but I'm just getting everything ready to go. So I said one of the reasons this is cool to stem everything out like this is because you can put your Pro Tools effects or your, your third-party plugin effects on each individual track. Another reason is because you wanna be able to print it. When I'm done composing all the MIDI for my drums, I definitely wanna print it, and now you're set up to easily do that. You could just hit return, hold shift option, click on the record button here, and then you're ready to go. You could just hit any of the ways that you start recording, three on your numeric keypad, or command spacebar, or F12 if you have it set that way in your prefs, and you can record like so. Once you've done that, once you've recorded your parts, what I would recommend you doing is right click on your instrument here and say make an active, but don't hide it. And I recommend that you don't hide it because if, if at any point in working with your mix and your arrangement, if you were to say, cut some time out, like if I went option one, cut time, apply. If I did that with this track hidden, the easy drummer track, it would not cut the time out of that track, but it would cut it out of everything else. So what that means is if you cut some time out of, the, out of your session with your Easy Drummer track hidden, then it would misalign your MIDI to everything else. And then if you ever want to go back at some point and say, oh, okay, I wanna get back in and re-input enable those tracks and mess with the MIDI, everything's gonna be out of alignment, which is a real pain in the butt. So a next step you might do is really take your time, set this all up the way you like it, and then go File, Save as Template. Now, whether or not you want to include the media just depends on like, do I want these MIDI files and these audio files in here? You probably usually don't. You really just want this whole setup. So let's say no, let's, let's just not check include media. And I'll call this Easy Drummer Template 1. And I'll just leave it in Songwriter and say, okay, so now we have a couple things. If I close out of this session, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna save and go Shift Command W, I can now go Command N, make something new, go Create From Template, and then Easy Drummer Template Number One. That's what I just started with. So then you could start from that point. Or what's also cool, if I cancel that, let's say you're in some other session, whatever it is, and you make some tracks, you do some stuff, whatever it is. And then you're like, oh, I wanna, I wanna bring that in. You could import session data from the template in something you've already started. So I would go, what is it, Shift Option I? Yes, Shift Option I, which is import session data. And then where you'll find that is in your documents, Pro Tools, Session Templates, Songwriter is where we put it, Easy Drummer Template number one, and say open, and then here you can choose whatever you want. If you just want all of this stuff to come in, you can just option click and those all went to new track. Say okay. And everything will come in. There it is. All right, I hope you dig this. Check it out. Have fun. <laughs>